get started. <clears throat> we are now reconvening open session. We will now consider action on closed session items. You want to? Okay. Okay, we'll do that at the end. 6A1, we're going to review the fiscal year 2020 annual financial audit engagement letter. All right, 6A2, review revisions to local board policies. Mrs. James, can you lead us through this? Well, Mrs. James is looking at that. I'll tell the board you've got two policies in front of you on the day on the table tonight: BED and BDF, that um, will be up for discussion. In addition to the other two that were included in the board. Okay. All right. So. Uh Okay, BDF is um, a uh, policy in front of you is a version that's slightly different from what was in the board book. Um, it's adding a little bit of language around um, administration appointed acti um, committees and then changing a word at the top to reference citizen committees rather than so a more general term. On the handout that's attached to it, or the, just the text that's attached to it, there's a little bit of um, definition of what the kind of the types of committees are. So as I was sitting at CRSS this weekend and thinking about this policy, I realized the board has really two types of citizen committees. One's an oversight committee, like the bond oversight committee we heard from, and then the other is an advisory committee where a trustee or two trustees may sit on the committee and we're trying to study an issue or get some advice or something like that around an issue. And then, the, the, then there's another type of advisory committee that's an advisory committee that's appointed by the superintendent and that might be for whatever purposes that he would or she would appoint an advisory committee. Sometimes trustees are on those and sometimes they're not, uh, or they might participate. Um, so I guess what I wanna know, for what, we want, what the committee kinda wants to know, and maybe Dave or Allison can sort of weigh in on this too, or give their perspective if I haven't covered it, is do we wanna include those kinds of definitions in the policy, or is that something that we would only put in the administrative procedures? On. Go ahead, Abby. Ms. Hilliger. I think to your question, I would just prefer it just being part of the procedures. Can you talk about why it may why it may be one way or the other, Mrs. James? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I, honestly, I've kind of gone back and forth on it. One is the, the, re, the, the reason for putting it in was that it provides definition and explanation to the community. Um, the reason, and I, think that, and, I, and I think that the categories are broad enough that it's not too prescriptive. Um, the reason for not putting it in is that if, some, if we wanted to add a variation on one of these, um, that we may but have to change the policy, though I can't really think of a situation that wouldn't fall into one of these categories. So I guess the main reason for putting it in there was that it provides definition to, for the community and then for the board going forward or you know, s subsequent boards um, to know, um, uh, you know, just 
just to have the definition there. And, and I guess it eventually then provides guidance. So the next part in, in num bullet number two there, I listed some things that I think for sure need to belong in administrative procedures. And that is things around the meeting norms and expectations, giving people a chance for everyone to speak, um, representation on committees to make sure that we have broad representation from the community, and membership, membership selection processes of that's talking about lotteries or, or uh, blind selection or whatever that might be. So. Thank you. Mr. Rosenthal, do you have a thought? Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of favor putting this kind of into the policy. Um, I don't, I don't think that it distracts from it. I don't think it makes it too long. It's fairly short anyway. Um, and as somebody from the public is going through this, they have a very clear understanding of what type of committee that um, uh, that they're concerned about or that they want to know about rather than getting into the procedures, clicking on additional links, and then finding it there. So I, I think I think this is fine. And again, it just has to be remembered that if something gets added or changed, then it has to get changed here, too, is the only drawback that I've ever seen. So. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rice? Thank you, Mr. Perdeen. I, I agree with uh, Mr. Rosenthal and Mrs. James. I don't want to overcomplicate things, but if we have I think it's important for advisory committee roles and responsibilities to be well defined in policy because from an advisory committee, the board may overrule their recommendation. And that really needs to be spelled out what their roles and responsibilities are. So for that reason, I think it should be included in policy. Ms. Hellier. Okay, so. I'm hearing you guys. I understand what you're saying. Just a question. So, so this is just going to sit as, as is in the policy, just as a definition, just a random definition in the policy. If it has no action, have no, where are you going to use it in the in the in the in the policy? Well, we would probably excuse me. Just let me go ahead and answer that. We would probably go ahead and put it in. Uh, weave it in some to some narrative or put it in in the um, in this policy that's right here right so it's page two is the actual policy as, as it's written um, and we could maybe list this these as um, uh, a description of board appointed committees which is the first part and then the last paragraph is around administration appointed so we could just add a sentence or two uh, describing that. I didn't get that far, Addy. <laughs> I mean, I just, I wrote down these bullets and I sent an email to Charles and when he and I talked about it today, we just said, let's put, bring this as a handout because we don't have time to work up the language around it. And I just haven't yeah. had a chance to do it. You know, I just tend, and I hear you guys, I, I, I just tend to think that policies, when you think of Robert Rules and Order, you really think of policies as some actionable, you know, type of deal and pr process. You, you have your procedures that kind of define some of this. I mean, I guess I can go either way. I personally still think that this should go into procedures. But it's the majority. Whatever thing that Allison, did you have one way or the other, briefly? I didn't really have anything additional. I do also agree with um, Grell, I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. James, Mr. Rosenthal, Mr. Rice, that I would like to see this in policy and probably for some of the reasons that Mr. Rosenthal stated, that we have uh, citizens, the community citizens, that will be on these committees and they should clearly see uh, what it what it's about and what the definition of it is. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Yeah, the, the only other thing, Grail, you and I talked about this on the phone is, uh, you know, what I would what I would also consider is maybe for each, put one example um, for each one of these, like you mentioned, Bond Oversight Committee or the SBOC, right? Um, for one, safety and security would be another you know, different type. 
And then the other thing to consider is some of these policies, like SBOC, or some of these committees actually have their own policy. So um, maybe we're, you know a little refer, you know, reference to it, you know, C policy, whatever. I don't remember the, the letters. But. Mr. Rosenthal, Ms. Jean. No, I'm, I'm good. I, I I think I understand. We'll go forward and we'll we'll weave this in and uh, then we'll bring it back next time and hopefully get it out to you this week. Thank you very much. Moving along to our next policy, Mrs. Jean. Okay. Well, I don't have two copies of the same thing, so I'm not able to. And my computer's out of gas, so I'm not able. To Okay, so um, VED is the public participation in board meetings, and this policy um, we, we needed to update because of a change in state law. And so we, um, so we worked on it some, uh, and then uh, had some additional feedback uh, from what's up on the screen. Um, so in the, in the copy you have in front of you in the philosophy, we added some language to really express what the board's uh, desire about public participation is. So th this is up on the screen. Let's get rid of that because that's not accurate anymore, please. It really talks about um, the one that's in front of you talks about um, providing opportunity for collaboration, partnership, and information sharing as part of the, the goal behind uh, public participation in the board meetings. Um, so there's a few language changes as the policy goes on. Uh, and, but the committee had a couple of outstanding questions. So one of them was around um, the term signing up and what do we mean by the term signing up. And the second was around um, the process around um, referring to complaints uh, or concerns. So I don't, hopefully someone can speak to that. Dr. I. Yes, so as far as the first question goes with signing up, we would have an exhibit and that would be the form that anyone who would wish to speak uh, at a board meeting would complete online. We would have that as an exhibit uh, that would accompany the policy that everyone can understand kind of the expectations, the time frame in which to submit, uh, any other expectations that go along with that. And then for the second question, in terms of the uh, question of, of if a complaint is brought forth or a concern and how that factors into the grievance process, whether it be DB, DGBA, FNG, or GF, uh, Veronica and her team, as they receive those concerns, if it comes to light that it is more of a grievance in nature, then they funnel those to the Student Affairs Department. And that's, a, that's been a pretty smooth process in conversation with Veronica that that's gone well and they are able to identify that and get the, uh, the community member the, you know, the help they need to work through that process. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. And, and I think that's good. Um, and I think that's okay to have in policy too because it's, it's just like a broad thing where, you know, if it's identified that, they, that you're not stop, we're not stopping them from speaking, right? And, um, but it, you, you may communicate to them with, with that person before the meeting and they may say, oh, okay, I don't need to speak then or, or whatever. I mean, again, we're not trying to stop anybody from speaking. Um, so I think that's good. And I think when Jerry and I spoke again today about like just, just the whole term sign up, you know, there's so many people in this district that have and just remember, oh, I just go to the district and I sign up, you know, at before 6.30 or whatever it was, right? Six o'clock or four, five thirty or whatever. Uh -oh. Hello? Okay. Um, and so, uh, and so I think, I think if we can maybe wordsmith that a little bit too, just to make sure people 
get, you know, understand that that's not, that's not the, the procedure anymore. Ms. Hellier? That was my question. I think you say something like, uh, comment shall submit a request, something like that. Request yeah, something. something like, something more specific. Because <coughs> sign up might, might say, you know, I just come in and sign a sheet, a piece of paper right. prior to, right. you know, and. And then they get mad and, you know. Yeah, but submit a request means that it's a little bit more involved than just sign my name. I, that's a good way to put it. I would, I would maybe change that in the policy. Say, you know, shall submit electronic, whatever, <coughs> electronic request or something. Request electronically. Or. Are all the are all the um, requests taken electronically, or can people fill in the form and bring it to the office? They have the option to do either. Um, we are gearing and, and moving towards electronic, but they do have the option of bringing it up to the building as long as it's submitted before 4.30. Okay, so maybe we should put something in the policy about 4.30 and submitting a request. I like that language. Or can we put that on the form? Can we it's put on the, the form. Let's put the 4.30 on the form. It's on the form. Which is the exhibit that's referenced at the bottom of that paragraph? Right, it's the very next page. So, the, the form seems confusing to me. Maybe I'm not reading it correctly. It says prior to 4:30, but then it says, or it also may be filled on site and handed to. Okay, that's current. 30 minutes prior to. That's currently our practice because the board operating procedures haven't been updated. This form is will be adjusted once the board operating procedures have been approved after the policy has been approved. Currently, we're still accepting them. Um, the committee had discussed some months ago about continuing to let people bring them in 30 minutes prior to the meeting because that's been our practice until the policy is updated. And then subsequently, the board operating procedures would be updated to reflect that. And so then what will be the new? Submitted um, electronically by 4.30 or brought up to the office by 4.30. Is that, that was part of the state law? That, the, 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 that was part of the committee's discussion, I think. Yeah. It was discussed amongst the governance committee. The oh. governance committee. We were there. Uh, we decided. What did we discuss? So we agreed on that? Mm -hmm. I guess that, that maybe, maybe if we did, maybe now that I hear it out loud and hear it in a different setting, um, it has a different context to me, and I'm not sure if I totally agree with it. So, I, I, I think the recollection was at the governance committee that there was um, oftentimes when there were 20, 30 submissions, it didn't give the staff ample time to review them and to make sure that they were ready to go and we were pushed too far in. I think those were the examples that y'all discussed in the governance committee. We're amenable to any changes. That's that's really the, that was a heart of the issue because with the new law and as its policy requires perhaps adjustment by the presiding officer, they need time to do that and they can't always they wouldn't be able to do that if it's a big issue and forms are coming in <coughs> just before the meeting. Okay. I just want to make sure that it's a four thirty, so that's normally about an hour and a half prior to. Thanks for helping me refresh my memory. Ms. James. Okay, so from the perspective of the policy committee, um, the language in complaints and concerns is okay, and we and so long as we're just allowing anyone to, making sure that anybody can still speak, even if they want to file a grievance or a complaint, they can still speak, and but we can give them this as a resource. And then my understanding is we're gonna change the language from sign up to submit a request. <coughs> and the concept about 430, that's going, that's in the, either in the form and the board operating procedures. So that is not the responsibility of the policy committee. So I'm sending that all back to the governance committee when you all work on the board operating procedures. Is that right? That's right. Okay, that's Thank all you. for policy. Thank you.
All right. What about? Would you need to say something, Mister? Or would you like to say something? I guess uh, I have a question, more so. Um, so, for the complaints and concerns section, were we um, adding what Mr. Rosenthal said that there would be some verbiage saying that they would be allowed to speak? Because when you read that paragraph, it seems like you may be referred away. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have two policies left here, so the EIE local and the FNCA local. Do we want to talk about that? Yeah, I can just speak to those real quickly. So the EIE is a complete rewrite. It's about retention and promotion, and I think uh, the team is not speaking of the policy team, but the honest team has done a great job rewriting that. It's a lot, it's way different. It's a lot clearer. It's not redundant and uh, it's aligned with current practice. And then FNCA, we have reviewed the, one of these meetings before. That's been updated uh, with Mr. Morris's help and I think it's, I think it's good, so. All right, um, thank you very much. 6A3, review of the previous meeting minutes for January 13th, 2020. January 21st, 2020. All right. 6B1A, review the purchase of fall sports apparel, equipment, and related items. 6B1B, review the purchase of library supplies, materials, and related items. 6 6C1A, review the purchase of power school and extension of contract with Eduforia for integrated system support. 6D1A, review the purchase of additional emergency call boxes and related items. Mr. Rosenthal. Yes, uh, my only comment was on this is when I read it, it had something about um, uh, the source of funding would be bond fund and or general fund and I would just like to hope that you can use bond funds for this so we don't have to dig into our general fund so just a, re a request thank you thank you Mr. Rosenthal moving along to 6E2A Review the purchase of grounds, maintenance, equipment, supplies, and related items. 6E2B, review the purchase of local area network equipment and related services. Excuse me, Mr. Dean. I'm sorry, Dean. Mr. James. Yeah. What's that? 6E1, review the recommendations for new positions and campus staffing for 2021 school year. <coughs> Thank you, excuse me. Go ahead, Mr. Rosenthal. If we could scroll down to that, okay. Um, if we, can we scroll down to the positions and the, and the numbers? Uh, what was I looking? Okay. So my question is, and I, I think I understand it. I think it makes sense. But for the early college, high school, P Tech. So we're talking about because we're going to be in year two, so we're going to have another hundred students in each of three campuses, right? For the two P-TECH programs and the early college high school. Um, so that's where those, okay. At all three campuses, you'll have a freshman and sophomore cohort. Right. So you're doubling the students. So. so how many teachers, I guess, how many teachers do we have now? Do we have 18 now? I would, go ahead, Jim. I guess when I was reading through this, it's like, that seems like a lot for 300 additional kids. Um, I don't know, I didn't really do the math, but it yeah. seems like a lot. <laughs> Mr. Rosenthal, so we're adding uh, one for, for content at all three schools. Okay. And in addition to that, we're also gonna add uh, AVID, uh, AVID staff as well. I thought that was a separate one though. I thought I saw somewhere where AVID was separate. Or is this everything right here? 
Okay, because I, I thought I saw there was a separate. It, it probably is separated down below what um, David, the piece you're looking at right there is by priority by program. Okay. So that for the for the early college, I would include the avid and the teachers is anything related to that program. Okay. If you could, if you could just check on that, maybe provide a little more detail. I, I'm, again, I'm not against if that's what we need. That's what we need. I just that just doesn't make sense to me. Just looking at the at the numbers there. Yeah. So I will work with Brian, but. Uh, the last count was four teachers at the three schools, right? So that's 12. An avid teacher for every school, that's 15, and then a counselor uh, okay. at every. So that would be the 18. So 12 teachers plus uh, the three avid okay. plus three counselors equals the 18. Yeah, and if you could just show the estimated class sizes in those, that's all. Absolutely. Again, we'll not, not opposed to, um, I'm not trying to programs that are successful, but I just want to make sure. Okay. Just, it just stuck out to me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Moving along to 6E2A, review the purchase of grounds, maintenance, equipment, supplies, and related items. 6E2B, review the purchase of local area network equipment and related services. 6E2C. I don't know how the rules work. Right wait, here. no, no, no. Wait. wait. We'll have comment okay. at the end, sir. 6E2C. Review the purchase of school due annual support services and facilities management software and solutions. Six E three. A, review the construction services agreement with Hellos Construction, Inc. for turf and athletic renovations at multiple campuses. <clears throat> Mr. Rosenthal. Uh, Oscar, is this, are we actually just replacing turf or are we actually putting in new turf? <coughs> it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's both. It's replacement at the you know, stadiums and than you at the middle and some of the high school. Okay. I, I don't know if laws have been final, drainage laws and procedures and, you know, protocol have been finalized yet for the county uh, or whatever particular cities these may, these may be in. Um, but I know if we're, the, the, the talk is that if you're going to put in turf, you gotta, you gotta provide additional drainage. Has that been incorporated into the cost? Yes, sir. So we, uh, this particular project has an architect. The architect is VOK. So the architect has run through all of those traps with the city. Okay. So we're not going to get hit with like another half a million dollars because, oh, uh, well, we just found out we had to put drainage in. Uh, there, there are some drainage, but it's included in this place. That's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. 6E3. B, review the construction services agreement with E-Contractors USA LLC for kitchen renovations at multiple campuses. 6E3C, review the construction services agreement with Prime Contractors Inc. for HVAC MEP renovations at multiple campuses. 6E3D, Review the revised project budget for restroom renovations on multiple campuses. 6E3E, review use of 2018 bond program contingency funds. 6 on the agenda is our audience item. Mr. Jack Martin, are you here? Would you please stand to the sure. walk to the microphone? You will have three minutes. Okay. Mr. Rosenthal will let you know when you have thirty seconds left. Okay. Thank you so much. My sincere hold, apologies second, for uh, my sincere apologies for interrupting there. Uh, we've never done this before, so and and I just thought 
we, we might lose our opportunity. Uh, also, my sincere apologies to Mr. Pham. I know that this is not the way we like to do things. It does not win friends and influence people. But uh, it came to our attention late this afternoon that a matrix had been issued that indicated that Aruba Networks and our partner had lost this uh, very important to us uh, opportunity. And then uh, we realized that tonight was the night that it was to be discussed. So we took action and sprung in and, and wanted to address this. Uh, I provide, provide some documents. I guess I'll just leave them with you afterwards. But as, as you can look at the matrix that I, I think you may have, do, do you all have this? Please hand it to Mr. Roger behind you, sir. Okay. You will see that uh, we were graded uh, out of a possible 25 points, 25 points for our price. We worked very hard here, and we wanted to go out of our way to make sure we got the attention of the school board. What was really puzzling to us is where we got very, very low marks. I mean, marks that we've never seen before when it comes to quality of our equipment, extent to which the goods meet the needs of the district, and vendors past relationship with the district. I mean, I, I will point to the vendors past relationship with the district. You use us for a product called ClearPass that has worked perfectly for you all, and it was brought in because the current guy, Cisco, just have never been able to make their equivalent work. I've attached for, the, for you on page two a list of our Houston area customers. And you can see there that we have a quite extensive list of customers that are very satisfied and use us extensively. And, and included on here is Fort Bend. I also have attached analyst comments from Gartner, Forrester, and IDC, which rate us as number one or number two in every category across the, 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 the spectrum. So it's very evident that not only can we save you a ton of money for the district, but we also are, I mean, to, to say that uh, our quality uh, on a scale of 20 points is a 6.33, we just don't understand how that could be. So we just needed to bring it to the attention of the board and ask that there be some other due diligence. 30 seconds. To allow us to address these concerns because of the savings that can be passed on to the district and the taxpayers. So I think if you look at this packet, you'll see that we're a substantial co company. I mean, not just in Houston, Austin ISD, Pflugerville ISD, Shell, BP, others have all converted to us lately. I mean, we, we are uh, part of HPE and are really uh, having Mr. a big impact in the market. Mr. Martin, thank you very much for being here this evening and providing this information to us. You bet. Moving on to our action items, 8A1, may I have a motion? I move that we approve the purchase of the 16.24 acres of real property located in the Sienna Plantation Development. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Halliger and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote by show of hand. Motion passes. 8A2, may I have a motion? I move that we approve the, um, approve the easement with Center Point Energy at Old Missouri City Middle School, Cougar Gym. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Haliger and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote by show of hand. Motion, motion passes. Abstained. Okay, you're abstaining. I'm an abstention. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Helliger, who works for Center Point Energy. <laughs> May I have a motion to adjourn? I move the week adjourn. This meeting is now adjourned. Yeah.